Hey guys, Haley Lane aka Key Black here and welcome back to another episode of Off the Cuff. And today I want to talk to you guys about Metal Gear Solid, which is going to be kind of funny for me because admittedly, I don't actually remember that many details about the plot. What I do remember are certain scenes and the fact that I started playing the series with Metal Gear Solid 5 back in 2015 and it was uh, a couple friends of mine convinced me to play it exclusively on the promise that I could send bears careening into the sky. <laughs> So that should probably give you an idea of how much I was paying attention to the story in that game. Uh, and that, that is to say, I wasn't. You know, I didn't really have any context for any of the Metal Gear stuff. The only thing I really knew about the series was Solid Snake is a guy and he hides in boxes. And that was pretty much the extent of it, right? Like I'd seen some of the memes floating around online. At some point I learned that Snake Eater was from a game called Snake Eater and that, uh, you know, people made jokes about Snake's butt all the time. Apparently he had amazing cake. And so <laughs> I was like, all right, I'll play the games. I'll, 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 I'll see if I can understand the memes and finally be able to josh around with my friends about this stuff. And uh, Metal Gear Solid V had some of the most engaging gameplay of any game I had played up until that point. So it was easy for me to get hooked, even though I wasn't really paying attention to, the, you know, the intrigue of what was going on. I did get kind of attached to the characters, what little I, I got about them. Like, I really liked Miller, um, and I really liked Ocelot, but, uh, you know, it wasn't really one of those, like, yeah, I'm gonna keep this in my mind and I'm gonna, you know, play through the entire series. I wasn't really interested in doing that up until I played Metal Gear Rising Revengeance, which I was also convinced to play by my friends who were like, hey, the gameplay is excellent, right? Not that there's a whole lot that connects Rising Revengeance to the rest of the Metal Gear series, but I really liked Raiden. <laughs> I've mentioned before, right, I am such a sucker for edgy characters, so you put in front of me a pretty boy with white hair, edgy, cyborg ninja, I am all over that, like white on rice, so I was like, okay, I'll play some more Metal Gear, as long as it's gonna be more Raiden. And so I go back to and I play the original series, like from the start, Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2. I didn't play those games, admittedly. I knew that the gameplay of those was gonna be pretty slow going. So I watched playthroughs of those online, and then I started playing the games myself with Metal Gear Solid 1. Again, I wasn't really paying very close attention to the games or the story. It was more like, I'm gonna play the series to say that I've played it. I'm gonna get the memes. I'm gonna see what the game plays like, and I'm gonna see some more frickin' Raiden. <laughs> And I got more of that. Metal Gear Solid 1 was really fun. Um, I was really enjoying the fact that I finally understood what was going on with the whole, like, brother, you know, the meme with Liquid Snake and all that. Um, I do remember, however, being completely blindsided by the reveal that Miller was dead in Metal Gear Solid 1, which is, it's pretty funny in hindsight, because, you know, I played Metal Gear Solid 5 first. I got attached to him that way, and he was always the, it was ours, damn it. <laughs> they took it from us. You know, this isn't fair. It's not right. I knew him that way. I had no idea what the rest of the people who had played the Metal Gear series, you know, when they were coming out, thought of Miller. So that completely took me by surprise. And, uh, you know, it, it, I was, I remember, again, having a lot of fun with the series, but still wasn't really too deep into the lore. I was completely confused by what was going on, even though I had some friends who were, like, willing to explain it to me. I was still like, I don't get it. I don't really care. <laughs> I just want to play the next game. So I got to Metal Gear Solid 2. That one ended up being my favorite of the entire series. I basically played as like Metal Gear, Metal Gear 2, Metal Gear Solid 1, then 2, then 3, then Peace Walker, and I saved 4 for last. Two reasons. I knew it was the ending of the series chronologically, and also I knew it had more riding in it. <laughs> so I was saving that one for last. But 2 ended up being my favorite of the entire series from that playthrough uh, for two reasons. Again, number one, because of Raiden. Number two, however, because I have never been so scared playing a video game as I was playing the section in Metal Gear Solid 2 where you're running around as Raiden in the buff and the AI is basically messing with you and glitching in the background. Uh, it's still, it's still like, it still freaks me out to think about it because I remember being like, I... I don't know at all what's going on. Like, I barely understood what was going on in the game up until this point. Now it's like the rug was pulled out from beneath me. And I really want to play the series again for a couple of reasons, right? Number one, I'd like to experience that again. I want to see if it still hits me the same way it did the first time. But number two, I've mentioned a couple times now, I wasn't really paying attention on my first playthrough. So I kind of missed out on what made Metal Gear Solid 3 and onwards so good and how like, you know, how deep the story got. It wasn't until like after I played the series, like after a year, uh, Mon Pian told me a little bit about what was going on with the development of the Metal Gear series. And she kind of filled me in about some of the characters and the motivation 
machinations and some of the intrigue and psychological elements of the plot behind the scenes. Again, I still very barely understand any of that stuff, but I want to play it again because I'm like, you know what, now that I've kind of changed my approach to how I, how I consume media, I want to see just how differently it hits me now. Because I suspect, you know, as much as I love Raiden, as much as I have a soft spot in my heart for him, I suspect my tastes are going to have changed a little bit. I, I kind of want to test that against myself, you know? It's a little it's a little bit petty, I guess. But it's still, you know, it's like I had a lot of fun playing through the games the first time when I wasn't paying attention. I can only imagine how much fun it's going to be this time. At any rate, guys, thanks so much for listening and for watching when I finally do play through Metal Gear again. Again, I have to, like, make some time for myself to do so because there's so many games. I binged it the first time in, like, the span of two months. I don't, I don't think that I can do that again. But when I finally do, I will be sure to talk about it again and share that with you guys. And until then, I'll see you guys in the next Off the Cuff. Thanks again.